Today, we're taking a little bit more of an adventurous approach to exploring our career. What is that? I'm a snake. If only we had a snake expert. There is a whole world of jobs out there, most of which we've never heard of. Let's explore that world together. To guide us on this serpentine safari, we're joined by naturalist, herpetologist, and author, Johan Marais. Johan, thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right, so you've got a number of titles, but just to kind of sum up, what would you say that you do? I have a company called the African Snake Bite Institute. It comes from training in um, snake awareness and um, venomous snake handling. Mm. And then we are also uh, the largest supplier in Africa of snake handling equipment. Mm. So that's just one part of it. We do a lot of educational uh, talks. I'm involved with various book projects at the moment. I've written about 14 books and busy with a few more at the moment. And it's all sort of linked to the whole snake thing. I'm an avid photographer, so I spend a great deal of my time photographing reptiles and travel extensively. I work locally for mines, wind farms, soda farms, uh, construction companies, drilling companies. But uh, elsewhere in Africa, it's largely mines. We, we have clients in about 19 African countries. Right, right. And so, so is that sort of just advising all of those industries and all of those companies about sort of some of the dangers of, of the, the animals that they might encounter in those uh, locations? Yes, to a large degree. So the largest concern, obviously, is snakes and snake bites. Hmm. And in remote areas, you have snakes. So if you have a wind farm in Appington, or if you have a wind farm up in northern Mozambique or a mine, uh, there's a likelihood that you're going to you're going to run into problems with snakes from time to time. But we also look at bees, we look at wasps, spiders, marine envenomation, malaria. Uh, so we cover just about everything. Right. Um, this is largely part of the Occupational Health and Safety Act, where we we um, look at dangers in the workplace and we try to mitigate those. At the same time, there is a great deal of interest in what we do from members of the public. So we run a number of public courses and we call them snake awareness, venomous snake handling. Uh, we do one called boot camp where we just do a far more intense snake handling. And then we also have um, advanced courses and first aid for snake bites specifically. And these courses are held countrywide. So we have them Cape Town to Joburg, Durban, uh, all over the place. And talking about how you sort of get into this, um, is, is this a sort of common role in the, the sort of health professionals association? Or, or are there lots of consultants for these sort of, uh, let's call them dangerous animals or insects, uh, or is it quite a unique role? So we started this about uh, about 10 years ago. And mm. When I started the African Snake Bite Institute, there wasn't much going on in the line of professional training. Hmm. There's a little bit going on, but very low level. So we've, uh, over the years, I've developed these various programs. So it's, it's fairly unique. The equipment that we that we supply um, was also largely developed by ourselves. So we look at what's on the market and we improved on that. And most of what we supply, we make ourselves. Oh, cool. All right, excellent. So so in, in terms of the training, obviously you've got sort of the, the more civilian facing side of sort of saying, hey, you're interested in snake bites, you want to protect yourself, you can come on training. Um, is there training that sort of leads someone up to some sort of career? Can you become sort of a, a snake expert and, and guide people and make sure that people are safe and, and secure on site? Uh, is there that sort of um, pro path or progress? That's a good question because, uh, you know, I, I often get contacted by mothers who say that my, my kid is crazy about snake and he wants to become a snake handler. You know, what does he do? Yeah. Um, and my advice is, is invariably uh, you need good math marks at school. Oh. Because if you want to go to university, they look at your math marks. Mm. Start with a Bachelor of Science degree. Do that and do your honors. And once you've done honors, you can start specializing in herpetology. We have a, a few very good herpetological divisions at universities. Prof. Graham Alexander at WITS, Dr. Uh, Brian Maritz at the uni University of the Western Cape. And they specialize in herpetology. So then you do your master's there and uh, even better, do your PhD. Oh, and then you're at the beginning. And then we can talk further. Right, uh, right. After your PhD, uh, then you can get started. Yeah. So what we've pretty much done at the African Snake Bite Institute is I've, um, I've taken uh, 40 years of, of work on reptiles, 40 years of research, 40 years of, of writing various books. Um, and we've uh, taken, we've extracted from that uh, what we need. Um, a lot of the techniques that we teach on the safe removal of snakes 
are quite unique to to us as well. Mm. Uh, I believe that we've developed some of the best protocols in the world. Mm. On the first aid side, I've written Snakes and Snake Bites and a whole bunch of other books where I include advice on snake bite, and they've they've sort of become the standard works in South Africa. But uh, I think even more important is that uh, I get invited to a number of the top snake bite conferences in the world, mm. and these would be in uh, in the USA, the Netherlands. Uh, just before lockdown, we were in, um, in Madrid and Spain. Tom up in Kenya, and there I share a podium with uh, some of the top snakebite experts in the world, the likes of uh, Professor David Worrell from Oxford University, uh, Dr. Wolfgang Wister from Bangor, Brian Fry, Dr. Brian Fry from uh, from Australia, and um, and we thrash these ideas out and we chat mm. about them and uh, we look at what the latest research is and we try and come up with um, the best solutions and the most practical advice, and that's important because. Old medical advice or old first aid advice is bad news. Get rid of that. Look at the latest research. Of course, of course. Got to stay up to date. Awesome. All right. So what would you say is the most enjoyable part of your job? Oh, gosh. uh, Pretty much everything that we do. And uh, and I often say to people, the way I live should be legal. Mm. We get to travel extensively, mainly myself and my colleague, Luke uh, Luke Kemp. Uh, He's also now the co-author on some of the books that that I'm working on. Uh, we get to meet great people. We see new places. Um, when we have half a chance, we're in the field photographing reptiles and amphibians. Um, so all in all, we just, you know, there's there, you have uh, parts of the, of, of the work that's not always pleasant. But uh, if we look at the bigger picture, we, we have a, a fantastic lifestyle. Awesome. So we like working with reptiles. If we go to um, Ahanais to go and do training, we'll invariably stay an extra day and get out into the field, take our cameras, flip a few rocks, photograph a few snakes and lizards. So we we use our time wisely. Awesome. Awesome. So I'm sure you'll find it difficult to find anything to gripe about uh, with that sort of list. But is there anything that you find less than enjoyable? You know, there are times when you you are doing corporate training and you have an audience of maybe 30 or 40 people. Mm. And uh, it's very clear that they're there because they have to be there. They have just about no interest. Yes. So, uh, you know, then we have, to, we have to up our game. We have to, you know, get get them on board, get them interested, uh, make sure that uh, everyone in the audience has a bit of a sparkle in the eye mm. and, uh, and keep them awake for the session and, and make sure that they go away with something, not just, a, you know, another course, another waste of time, another little certificate. Um, so right. yeah, it, it can be hard at times. You, you already mentioned, obviously, if you've got a kid who really loves snakes and he's got some good maths marks, he might be the right sort of candidate for this sort of role. Uh, what about sort of personality? What sort of person would you want to sort of step into this space? So I think if, you, if you're looking specifically at, uh, at where we're very involved with training, you obviously, you, you, you're not going to work with introverts. Mm. You need people who are outgoing, who can engage other people, who um, are fairly confident in what they in, in you know dealing with other people, um, but we we have other aspects to the business as well. You know, we we maintain several hundred snakes that we use in the training, and we have a specialist that looks after those. So we have a uh, we have a person who's in fact busy finishing a degree at the moment, uh, and he he cares for the snakes, and it's complex because every snake is microchipped, mm. everyone is individually monitored. Uh, you've got to watch every time they shed and make sure the skin comes off. You've got to look out for uh, diseases and parasites, mm. look at their feeding regimes, make sure they're in good condition, that they're picking up weight. Uh, that takes quite some doing. So, yeah, there's, there's, um, we have people here that just deal with, with sales, that just uh, uh, sit behind that phone all day long and deal with all the calls, calls that come in uh, from people that want to buy equipment. Uh, right. So we have a team of about close to a dozen people to, that runs the African Snake Bite Institute. Right. So, so if, if you want to be part of something like that, you don't necessarily have to be a herpetologist. You you could be uh, just someone in that sort of business model, but you get to enjoy the context uh, of of the, yeah. the, the Snake Bite Institute. Yeah, quite right. So there's uh, there are a lot of opportunities, and no matter what you're looking at in life, you've got to put the effort in. Oh yeah, and that's the important part. Absolutely. I must just uh, add on one last point. When I was looking up on on YouTube, I saw one video where you were demonstrating how to pick up a snake properly, and I, I believe you you pick it up from the about the belly. Is that right? With with a pair of snake tongs, yes. With a pair of snake tongs. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was so counterintuitive because yeah. you always see people try to, you know, sort of whip it towards the the head, uh, and uh, you know, I I would have gotten myself. Um, 
slaughtered. <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, um, it's a bit of an ego thing. You know, mm. Everybody wants to grab a black mamba behind their head. Uh, more often than not, when you're dealing with snakes, like, especially snakes in your garden, uh, you know, if you've had the right training and you have a pair of snake tongs, first of all, you've got to work gentle with them. They are mm. wild animals. You treat them with respect. And the gentler you are, the more cooperation you get from the snake. You know, so right. if you, you've had the right training, the snake tongs, we pick them up at mid-body, gently get them into a container and, um, and deal with them quite easily. But everybody wants to be a cowboy. You know, everybody wants to grab stuff by the head, show fangs and all that sort of stuff. And that's not the right way to go. Mm. Mm, awesome. All right, and I suppose you've, you've got all the training for guys who are interested in, you know, just being a little bit safer. Uh, so I assume they can find that all at your, your website? Yeah, that's easy. Uh, it's africansnakepilotinstitute.co.za or otherwise you just Google my name. You Google Johan Marais and my name pops up first. Oh, lovely. Good stuff. All right. Excellent. So I think you've answered all of my questions. Uh, I've taken up uh, quite a bit of your time. So thank you so much for, for joining me for this quick little session. And hopefully we can get some guys interested in this uh, quite unique field. Uh, so thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thanks. So that's what it's like to be a snake specialist. So if you fancy the idea of making sure that people know how to properly handle dangerous reptiles, perhaps this is the career path for you. But even if you don't don't find yourself wanting to be on the front lines of dealing with fanged critters, perhaps you can find a role in some of the extensions like sales or marketing or even training. Or maybe slithery things are not quite your cup of tea. If there's a career that you would like to know about, or maybe you would like to share your unique career with us, leave a comment down below. And if you would like to stay up to date with what careers are out there, don't forget to like and subscribe. Cheers!